Hey guys, what is going on? This is Dave Marshall with the RC Air Marshall YouTube channel, and today we're here doing the flight review of the all-new E-Flight P51 Mustang 1.5 meter, fully equipped with smart technology, um, all new construction techniques with the way that the wings snap on and off. I mean, this is an awesome plane. It's available now in stock. Uh, in both bind and fly and plug and play versions from Horizon Hobby or your favorite reseller of Horizon products. And we're going to go ahead and cut over to the flight and then come back into the studio and talk about the plane a little bit. All right, so we are prepping for the maiden flight of the E Flight P 51D, a 1500 millimeter plane with smart technology. This thing is pretty awesome looking. We're going to go ahead and taxi out here. Sorry, I'm doing some uh, voiceover narration here. The uh, I don't do a lot of talking during the maiden flight, so I figured you know I'll give some better better info just doing some overdubs. So, I always say that the wind is blowing or whatever, and uh, you know you can see the kind of nylon fencing there is blowing around. Now, uh, one thing that I'll tell you guys is I don't edit my flight videos. I may edit the videos of me talking, but not the flight videos, and you'll see that here. <laughs> what I meant was I'm going to try to take off left, right? Yeah, 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 it doesn't work. So, I'm a, I've got, you know, quite a bit of experience flying several other types of aircraft. You know, I can fly your tricycle gear aircraft. I got the E-Flight Commander. That thing flies awesome. And I can take that off every time, no problem. But this is my first, uh, first big warbird that's not like a hand launch plane. So, uh. I'm still, you know, getting used to how it handles on the ground, but we got her off, and now we are up, up, and away. So one thing that I noticed right away is that even with the battery, uh, and the battery that I'm flying in here is the Spectrum Smart Battery uh, 5000 6 cell uh, 50C pack and it is as far forward as I can put it on the battery tray uh, that slides into the nose section of the P51 model and the airplane has a tendency to want to climb on you uh, with the elevator set at mechanically neutral so I had to apply quite a bit of, uh, of down elevator in the trim settings <laughs> so it was kind of chilly out too Amy wasn't uh, wasn't super excited about the idea of filming anything longer than a jet flight so one thing that I'll say guys is uh, this P-51 with the AS-3X it handles beautifully. This is the bind and fly model, so it comes with the AR637TA receiver with AS3X and Safe Select. Uh, I don't use Safe Select, uh, but I do have AS3X turned on and it is locked in, no problem, even in the high winds. You know, I, I had heard a lot of folks like, oh, you don't want to made in high winds. Like, bro, I got AS3X. <laughs> I'm good. And uh, as I expected, the, the plane flew awesome. Uh, like I said, it's a big sweetheart in the air. It flies amazing. And, you know, one of the things, if, if you guys that have been watching my channel for a while, you know that when I'm doing a maiden flight, I don't do a lot of hot dogging. I like to keep the airplane. Uh, I, I like to give it some altitude in case I make any mistakes. Um, you know, and when I'm... Uh, trimming it out, I like to have, you know, enough vertical space to be able to make those trim adjustments uh, without having to, you know, make any radical elevator movement. So, 
Just to give you an idea of why it always looks like my flights are like super high up in the air. That's why. But um, the other thing is, uh, while this is a great looking plane on the ground, uh, it also has a great presence in the air. The, uh, the blue um, and silver scheme, I, I think looks excellent. And the invasion stripes uh, certainly help with, um, you know, with being, being able to, to see the plane. Of course, I'm a sucker for invasion stripe. You can put invasion stripes on anything and I'm gonna love it. So I went ahead and dropped the gear. And about here, I'm putting in a notch of flaps. There we go. And I, I only do uh, takeoff flaps here. I only do one notch of flaps. I don't do um, the full landing flaps. This thing does have some big beefy flaps on it. Um, I think on the third or fourth flight I did, uh, it, the wind started dying down and I did do a uh, you know, full flap landing and it, it handled it awesome. So here we are coming in on our final. And missed the runway a little bit and sat it down in the grass, but I am pretty happy with that landing. It's awesome. I love the way this plane looks, and uh, you know, I'll tell you the the tail wheel steals steers awesome. Great ground handling. All right, guys. So there is the maiden flight of the E Flight 1500 millimeter P51D Mustang. Uh, what can I say? This this is a great bird. It's got great air presence. Uh, it handles really nice in the air. Uh, very smooth flight characteristics. It's a very scale flyer. Uh, this thing doesn't have like rip roaring speed demon um, speed, uh, but it certainly goes fast enough. I'd, I'd estimate 75 to 80 miles an hour on the higher end of the speed scale. Um, it doesn't have a super high, you know, drill bit style roll rate. Uh, you know, it's got nice scale aileron rolls. Um, you know, it's certainly capable of doing loops. It's a very scale flyer, and I love it. Uh, let's see. Um, the smart technology in this thing is is fantastic. Uh, and I'm not going to hit on that too much right now because I'm going to be doing a whole another you know, video on the smart ecosystem and how that all ties together. Uh, with this p51 and this being one of the first airplanes that they've released with the full smart package uh, i think that that's a uh, that now is the time you know to go ahead and get that information out there for you guys uh so you can see you know what the full smart ecosystem is all about uh and and really see what i'm talking about when i say like the, it's totally worth it you know, I I uh, hear a lot of folks that say like, ah, oh, you know, I can do telemetry already. I can do this already. I can do that already. You can't do it the way this does it. This is just awesome. It doesn't take anything else. It is completely brainless. Uh, they have uh, just hit a super grand slam home run with smart technology. And, uh, and I am looking forward to sharing that video with you guys. So, uh, you know, we'll move on from there, but smart is awesome. Um, what else? Um, so it flies excellent. It's got the smart technology. It looks great. Great air presence. Um, it sounds great. You know, as I was uh, flying it, you know, a little lower and pushing the envelope a little more on later flights, you know, you can really hear that propeller cutting through the air and it just sounds, you know, like a big, I mean, it sounds like, a, sorry, I like to add sound effects every now and then. It sounds like a big nasty warbird with a big prop, 
Um, the total size of the prop is 15 and a half inches. I'm not sure what the, what the pitch is, uh, but it's got a lot of low end torque, not a lot of high end speed. And I think it's awesome. It, um, it really flies great. Uh, I'm sure that I could get more speed out of it if I were to change out the prop with a two blade prop, but that's not what I'm going to do. Um, <clears throat> let's see some negatives, some things that I think probably could have been thought out a little better. Uh, the main gear door hinges, uh, not the, uh, the, the sequence gear doors that, that open up in the middle and allow the, you know, the, the main gears to fold up in there. But the, the ones that are actually physically um, mounted to the strut, the pins that, uh, that clip into the fuselage or into the, into the wing uh, are really small and, and they break really easy. The, you know, the plastic is not very durable. Um, and I had the left... Uh, gear door fall off on me today. I mean, it's it's on there right now. You can see it, but it's only on there with one pin. Uh, if I were to, you know, push the plane, that thing would just flop onto the ground. Um, now, if you're really good with warbirds and you can fly nice and smooth um, and land them nice and smooth and not have any, you know, any bounces or anything like that, you may not have any problems. I didn't, I didn't break this one until... You know, I went off the runway and into the grass, um, and it and it came back with one of the one of the gear doors broken off. So, I mean, totally my fault. Uh, but the the gear door is it is a weak point. So keep that in mind. Um, you'll also need to uh, make sure that you uh, put the prop on a prop balancer after you get the blades installed on the prop hub. Um, it's not super bad, but it it did need um, you know to have some plastic removed from a, or, or some material removed from a couple of the blades uh, to get it in balance the way that I want it to be balanced. And uh, the front screw on the on the prop adapter. Uh, when you put the front spinner cone on and put the screw into the prop adapter, that screw will back out on you. So um, make sure you put some Loctite on there uh, and let it cure overnight before you take the flame out for, uh, for its first flight. Uh, so that screw's not backing out. Uh, otherwise, you'll come back and you'll hear that thing shaking around. And that's no good. Uh, and other than that, uh, there's not a lot of other bad things to say about this airplane, man. It's awesome. Uh, if you're considering, you know, getting a P-51, if you want a P-51, you know, this thing is a great choice. Uh, I think, you know, with the combination of the construction techniques that were used, because it is using, it's not called Carbon Z, but it does use the Carbon Z build techniques. It's a, you know, it's a better foam. It's a better, uh, you know, construction methodology. There's carbon spot spars running down the sides of the fuse um you know the wings are unique in the way that they attach and detach from the main wing assembly you know the the wing tips come off which did make it much easier for transportation purposes and they um they hold in tight you know whenever you insert it into the socket it just kind of sucks it uh, and holds it tight on there and they're not the easiest thing in the world to take off. So I'm not worried about them at all. Um, and they're replaceable and cheap. You know, I think it's five bucks for a new set of those those quick disconnect pins. So, I mean, if they become a weak point over time, it's going to be easy to replace them. And hopefully this plane will be on the market for quite some time. So we should always have those spare parts available for us. Um, and I mean, that's pretty much it, guys. I'm not going to, you know, go on forever because, uh, I mean, as you guys, I mean, I could talk forever about any airplane. Uh, and, you know, if we go over this thing with a fine tooth comb, I mean, are we going to find things that are wrong with it? Of course. Are we going to find things that are great with it? Uh, of course. You know, but this, this plane, you know, definitely gets two thumbs up from me. I think it's fantastic. It flies like a baby doll and it takes off and lands 
like a like a tail dragger, like a Mustang would and should. So, you know, if you're looking at this as like your first airplane, it's not a good first airplane. It's probably a great fourth airplane, uh, you know, after you get used to your trainer and, you know, so you've got your apprentice, uh, you know, that you trained on, and then you shift over to something like a Timber or a T-28, you know, to get some of that low-wing experience, and then maybe a Commander or like a 1.2-meter Warbird, and then go with something like this. Um, you know, this is a big investment airplane. Anytime you get up into these foamies that are, you know, sitting at that $500 mark, you know, these are, are typically not planes that would be good at all for beginners. So, you know, this is certainly more of a plane that I would say is going to be good for experienced pilots. Uh, but if you've got that experience and you're looking for your next Warbird, man, this, this is a great choice, especially if you're running Spectrum Radio Equipment. Uh, once you get your hands on that smart technology, you're not going to want other planes that aren't smart um, anymore. Uh, the, the amount of data that you're getting from the airplane and what you can do with that, you know, not having to set timers anymore, let the receiver tell you when your batteries were dying, you know, dying. It's, it's awesome, you know, and this is the future of the hobby right here. So, that's it guys. I'm going to go ahead and uh, and cut this off. This is Dave Marshall with the RC Air Marshall YouTube channel. Please like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, and make sure that uh, you join us every Monday for our RC Air Marshall Mondays. Uh, that is every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, that's all I got. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. We will talk to you guys later. See you soon.